Good morning, Shubas. How you all doing? So, continuing on with my faction stories series. This time around, I'm going to be looking at GIGN or the French faction in the game. So, GIGN, they are the national. I'm going to definitely say this wrong. Gendomir, Gender, Gendomir intervention group. So, it's a it's a natural unit created in 1973. So, they've been around for a little while specialised in counter terrorists and they actually because they're so so good and specialised in what they do they actually train other special forces in hostage rescue upon planes and all that kind of stuff they're really really renowned for hostage rescues on planes and any instance involving planes and they they really really good at what they do so GIGN uh, G so the GIGN like I said, specialise in counter-terror stuff on planes. Now, one of their most famous stories, you may have already heard of it, is the Air France Flight 8969. So this was an incident that happened not actually too long ago, only, well actually it was quite a while ago now, 22 years ago, 1994, and it was actually on Christmas Eve. So what happened was there is a French plane over in Algeria. Algeria were in quite a serious state of civil war. There was not a lot of good stuff happening in that country at that time. And all other planes were actually stopped from going there because it was such a high risk area. Air France for some reason was still flying there. Not quite sure why, but they hadn't actually been told to stop flying there yet. But I think they were actually waiting for the phone call to tell them to stop. But this actually happened before they got that. So what it was, was these was it four or five guys I think I think it was four guys actually came on board dressed as Algerian police they were checking people through there was there was nothing to to really indicate that they weren't legit uh, everyone thought that they were fine they were doing their jobs until someone kind of started to twig that something wasn't quite right when they saw a stick of dynamite hanging out the pockets of one of them at this point Obviously, the terrorists got a little bit spooked and literally started brandishing um, AKs, Uzis, grenades, four, even more dynamite sticks. So, like, there was about 200 odd people on the plane at this point as well, including all of the crew. So everyone started absolutely bricking it. Which, to be honest, I don't blame them whatsoever. So what these guys' intention was was to actually fly this plane. They had already they were going around at this point now sticking the dynamite on certain areas of the plane to make for the most critical impact on the plane because what they wanted to do was fly it over the Eiffel State Tower um, yeah the Eiffel statue and then actually explode it killing everyone on board killing themselves and all the crew and all the rest of it making a really good or a really big point from their point of view they were a um, terrorist cell that wanted a few people released I believe it was um, from prison that had just been obviously arrested so these guys were not very happy they they've just taken 200 it was about 230 odd people hostage on this plane now the Algerian government obviously got wind of this eventually after a, after an hour or so of this happening because no one really knew what was going on they informed the French the French wanted to bring in their own military force to come and deal with the situation Algeria were not interested in this at all. They didn't want any French military or any French um, people actually on in their country. So what happened was Algeria didn't actually allow this plane to take off. Obviously, the terrorists are starting to really get peed off now, and they start killing hostages. I think they've killed one hostage. They've chucked, literally chucked him out of the plane, straight onto the tarmac. So obviously people are now starting to realise that these guys mean business and they are not going to be giving up. So Algeria is constantly trying to distract them, trying to keep them busy for the minute. Whereas the French are getting the GIGN um, faction now, the, the force all sorted out. And they what they actually did was actually very, very clever. What they were going to do is, or what they did do, is fly over to Spain and then they were going to go over to the airport and sort it all out. However, by the time they managed to do all that, the plane was actually in the air, headed towards France. Now, the pilot told these guys that we haven't got enough fuel because we've been here. They, they were there for over a day in Algeria. Uh, obviously, all the air conditioning's on, everything else is on. 
has used up the majority of the fuel. So the pilot tells the terrorists that they can't actually get any further than Marseille and that's where they're going to have to land, they're going to have to refuel all the rest of it, then they can continue on their flight. The pilot, in his, in his uh, naivety, was actually told, yeah, no, we, we don't want to, by the terrorists, we don't want to blow up the plane now, we just, want to, we just want a press conference on board the plane and we want to make our demands known and all the rest of it. So the pilot, for some reason, believed this, carried on to Marseille as planned. All the meanwhile, the, the um, GIGM were actually now flying back to Marseille, obviously, to get ready. But what they had been doing in that whole interim period was they actually had an exact replica of the same kind of plane, and they were perhaps in breaching it, how best to get into it, where, hos um, where the hostages are more likely to be, where the terrorists are more likely to be. And they were just constantly drilling, drilling, drilling how to get best into this plane and how to retake the plane over from the terrorists. Really, really clever idea, and they got everything set up before the plane had even reached Marseille. So, when the plane had reached Marseille, obviously the French are now taking over, they're trying to negotiate, they're trying to persuade all the terrorists and everything to obviously just lay down their arms, all the rest of it, and just resolve the situation. What they promised the terrorists was they were going to get a press conference on board of the plane, but what they needed to do was to make room at the front of the plane for them. So get everyone back right to the tail end of the plane. All the hostages, all the crew that they could. Get them all right to the back. And they can get the uh, press conference in the front all sorted out for them. So they can obviously make their demands known and everything. Obviously GIGN still floating about, still drilling, still getting ready to obviously start going into the plane so they the terrorists arrived at Marseille they shifted all the hostages and everyone to the back as they were asked to they completely believed the uh, the French government they were going to get a press conference onto the plane for them they had a couple of terrorists at the front one in the cockpit and I think one back with the hostages so what happened was they were there for a, I think it was another day or so and they were they were stood around starting to get a little bit peed off because no one was actually taking their demand seriously they killed another hostage chucked him out of the 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 airplane again they had already killed another one as well they've killed three at this point now and just literally chucked them out of the door and they're they're obviously they're starting to get really peed off now saying we're going to be killing a hostage every half an hour until stuff starts happening they really started to get annoyed now. GIGN are all set up, ready to go, just waiting for the go ahead. One of the um, terrorists got so annoyed that he's now, it's night time, and he just started shooting at the air control tower. Absolutely destroyed the air control tower with his, with his AK. And at this point, they the French government had just completely had enough and gave the and gave the go-ahead for the GIGN to move in. So GIGN already had the stairs and everything set up to the correct level. What they did was, because the terrorists didn't realise that they could actually open the door from the outside, there was a squad of GIGN operatives that went into the back, flashed it, stunned it, got in, took the hostage out and saved all the hostages in the back. However, there was the co-pilot and I think the pilot in the cockpit with one of the, host with one of the terrorists two other terrorists were floating about in the plane um, they got obviously taken out they uh, but then they they couldn't get into the cockpit um, they eventually breached it managed to take out that terrorist as well and that was that was job done they once they had stormed the plane though they were a little bit unsure about who was terrorist and who was hostage so they made sure they kept everyone secure in where they had been at the back of the plane until they had completely resolved the situation so really really interesting thing to to read about there was loads more that happened as well loads more in the build up and everything of what actually happened what all the GIGN and everyone did really really interesting read and really interesting story to uh, learn about so if you are interested in reading a little bit more in depth Air France flight 8969 and it happened on the 24th of December 1994 have a look really really interesting read really good read so I hope you've enjoyed this one learning a little bit more about the GIGN and one of their most famous uh, 
obviously a hostage incident. I hope you've enjoyed this one guys, thank you for joining me. As always, if you could like it, subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what you think, all that lovely fan doobie-tastic stuff, that would be awesome. And I will catch you in the next one.